Hello, Good Shepherd friends. We're winding down our pledge card drive here at the church, and we're busy building our budget for 2019. And I've been asked by the stewardship and finance teams of the parish to say a few words about giving. First, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who's turned in a pledge card and offered anything of themselves to our dream of a 2019 budget for the church. I also want to be clear and honest with you and let you know that we're a bit short. If we receive all of the pledges that we received last year, we'll still be a bit short of our dreams for our 2019 budget, which includes our big dream of a full-time youth minister. So you'll receive a letter soon from our senior warden, David Young, in which he'll give you more details about how we're doing and our stewardship efforts and where the shortfall is and some details about our 2019 budget. And I believe that David's going to ask you two questions. The first question is this, if you have not yet pledged for 2019, will you turn in a pledge card by the end of 2018? And if you have pledged for 2019, will you consider increasing your pledge that we might fulfill our dream for 2019? Kristen and I have taken that second question to heart and to our prayers and have determined to increase our pledge for the coming year by $1,000. Now I want to share with you two stories, two things that I've learned in my own personal spiritual journey with giving. Kristen and I have been married for nearly 20 years, and in the early days of our marriage, I heard someone give a stewardship talk in which he defined token givers. A token giver, he said, is someone who spends his money on all manner of things throughout the year, and every now and then along the way or at the end of the year, he says to himself, huh. You know, we should give a little something to the church. He doesn't have a plan and he's not on a journey. He simply gives a token gift if it occurs to him. Now, I took that teaching in and I had a sudden realization. I was humiliated to discover that I was a token giver. So I rushed home to tell Kristen. I said, sweetheart, we're token givers. She said, what? I told her what a token giver is, and I quickly apologized. I said, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. I've let us down this path, but we're going to fix it. We're going to come up with a plan for our giving. Giving is, from now on, I said, going to be a part of our spiritual journey. Now, we had been giving, in those days, a token gift of $1,000 per year to the church we loved. Now, for many people, $1,000 given away annually to the church is heroic, generous, beautiful giving. God bless you and thank you if that's the case for you. For us, it was not enough. We were and still are blessed with wonderful, good-paying jobs. And giving away less than $100 per month was not enough. It was a token gift. So we set out on a journey towards giving away 10% of our income every year. 20 years into our journey, we have room to grow, but we are no longer token givers. We have a deliberate plan for giving, which is well thought out and prayed over. Giving is a vital, helpful, graceful part of our family's spiritual journey. The second thing I want to share with you, I learned from my great friend, Kathy Clark. Now, Kathy was our treasurer at St. Paul's Church in Athens, and for 12 wonderful years, Kathy and I worked together to model and teach giving at St. Paul's. We had such fun over the years talking with each other and our parishioners about money and giving it away. And one day, Kathy turned to me and she said, You know, Hendry, when we commit to giving away the kind of money that we both feel we're called to give to God through the ministry of the church, there are things that we will not do. I said, What do you mean? What do you mean there are things that we will not do? I don't understand. She said, well, let's say your household income is $100,000 a year, and you're working toward giving away 10% of that money to God through the mission and ministry of the church. There are some things that you and your family would have done with that $10,000 that you're now not going to do. And it struck me, yes, Yes, that additional trip, those extra meals out every week, or extra shopping excursions, this, that, or the other extra or extravagance will not be done. 
because we gave the money to pay for them away. I just love the idea. Oh, I smile when I think of the idea that we would become the kind of givers who don't do things because we gave the money to do them away. That is sacrificial giving, given out of an abundance of love. And I smile every time I think of it. And when I talk about giving money away to God through the church, I smile because I can feel a bloom of spiritual freedom growing inside my own heart when I consider loosening my grip on my money. Well, we all know, don't we, that money is such a powerful thing in our lives. Money can control us and make us fearful and hard-hearted. When I give money away, I feel less anxious and more grounded in love. I also smile when I think about giving money to the mission and ministry of the church because I believe so deeply that the world needs what the church has to offer. At Good Shepherd Church, we say all the time, love is all. Well, we offer love passed out in so many forms here, from worship to pastoral care, to formation for our children and youth, to justice work, tending to the sick, the sorrowful, the homeless, the hungry, and the poor. The world, I always say, needs Christians because the world needs our love in its many incarnations. We believe in the work of the church, so we give. Now that's just a little bit of the narrative of my personal journey with giving. I think the important thing is to give with an intention and commit to giving as a journey. Kristen and I are clear that God is calling us to be more than token givers. And we are clear that it brings us great joy to be givers who don't do stuff because we gave the money to do it away. What is your story? with giving.